My name is Kanisha Paliwal, and I'm here today to bring to you a revolutionary dating idea that's going to transform the way that we interact with people around us. I introduce to you Mila. But before I dive in, a little bit about me. As I mentioned earlier, my name is Kanisha Paliwal, and I'm the founder of Mila. I come with a background in relationship management, asset management, and most importantly, execution. After having graduated from Cornell University with a BS in Industrial and Labor Relations, I wanted to continue to keep my plate full. So I triple minded in law, inequality studies, as well as in business. <coughs> After having graduated, I worked at Goldman Sachs and at DE Shaw, where I focused on client relationship management and strategic thinking, working closely with management. <coughs> then to pursue my career, I am now here at Columbia University pursuing my master's in technology management. And since I love public speaking and was itching to go next, I've actually been doing this since I was 15 when I delivered a TEDx talk in the UK. But why am I here today? The issue is that we have a huge dating crisis on our hands. Now, how many of you at some point in your life have been on a dating app? Raise your hands. Right. Okay, quite a few of you. Don't they suck? Yes. They're god awful. No one really likes them, and so they're trash, thank you. And so we have a huge problem on our hands. Singles are getting increasingly frustrated with the current dating apps that they have available to them. They're impersonal, there's too much pressure to do with a formal first date, and so people aren't getting those genuine connections that they want to. And so everybody here is losing. And the issue is that the current consumer's needs are not being met in a multiple different ways. But let's start with one of them, persona dissonance. The people that we see on our screens are inherently different to the people that we meet in person. There is a disconnect between this, and much of this can be attributed to the fact that a lot of people actually lie on their dating profile. I won't judge you if you have either. 42% of people actually say that they've lied about their app whether it's their age, their height, their interest, whatever it may be. And so there's this sense of distrust around the current dating app and the industry. And a lot of this is because people don't trust the algorithms that are matching them. So if you like a Tom, Dick or Harry on the street, you're not going to really match with them or go on a date with them if they're not on your phone. And so there's this constant paralysis. Who do I pick? There's so many out there. I can't decide. There's so much pressure on the first date. And so we're stuck in this paralysis. And you, like me, and 75 other people continue to feel overwhelmed by this paradox of choice. So what's the solution? Mila. Mila is a venue-based dating app that allows users to check in and check out of locations to interact with those around you. It's created for social single individuals by a single social individual. <laughs> and so Mila really seeks to bring back the charm of the meet cute that has now been long lost, unfortunately, in the current dating app industry. So why does it make sense to do this now? Why am I here in front of you today? Well, 52% of individuals say that they feel emotionally unseen because of the current dating apps. And they also now have a growing desire for this in-person, face-to-face interaction. And so people today are putting themselves out there like no time other before. We've seen between 2022 to 23, a 40% increase in attendance of these single social events. And when we break that down into the type of events that singles are going to, we see a 400% increase in events-based attendance, such as uh, speed dating, and we see a 136% increase in athletic-based ones, like your run club or pickleball or some sort of league. And a lot of this comes down to the data. The data shows that we actually are likely to have a better relationship quality and greater satisfaction by meeting in person, leading to less divorce. And that's what everybody's aiming for. So the market, who is really interested and what do the numbers look like? Well, there is tremendous opportunity here in the current dating app industry. Projects to grow to up to $11 billion by 2023 with a compounded annual growth rate of 7.2%. Now imagine if we could tap into that. We can. When we look at the United States, we see that Mila has the potential to get up to 21.15 million users as well as earning a revenue just under 500 million. But the great thing about dating apps is that they are tremendously scalable. 
And so when we look at global expansion, we actually see that we can act to almost 5 billion in revenue with more than 220 million users. So what does a product look like? How does this all work? Let's bring it to life. Of course, we have a premium subscription model, but more on that later. But let's say you open your app and you're on the interface. The first thing is you have a check-in system. As you can see on the screen, you would have bar A, coffee shop B, bookstore C, and you can check into said venue. What you can also see is that you'll see the number of users who are also checked into that venue. 450 in bar A, 250 in bar C, etc, etc. After having checked into the location, since safety is our utmost priority, we will verify your GPS with the venue location that you said you are in to make sure that this is a committed, safe, inclusive community. After that, you then have access to a wide variety of profiles. You share your own and you see other people's as well. Now, on these profiles, you'll see your age, height, interests, favorite venues, whatever that looks like, to help gauge compatibility, to help gauge whether this is something that you'd actually want to pursue. But we go a step further. We also want to highlight the mutual connections that you may have to see and bring back any sort of sense of trust that has already been lost in the dating community. Oh, I'm connected to Grace because Grace is friends with Nathaniel. What a great thing, maybe I should go speak to her. Oh, I see Martine is connected to Ekin. Ekin was my best friend in high school. Let me go speak to Martine. And this is how we seek to bring back trust that has been long lost in the dating community. We also have the option for real-time messaging. You can't really find someone who's at the said bar. You want to test out the waters before you approach them. Whatever that may look like is up to you. And then of course, you form genuine in-person connections immediately. So from the time that you walk into a bar to the time that you meet the love of your life can happen within minutes or seconds if you're very brave, but it's all up to you. Now the great thing about the current dating app in the industry is that there is no clear market com competitor. Mila cuts out all of the superficial swiping or the faulty algorithms, any sort of profile matches, any sort of large unintentional community is all suddenly gone with our app. We give you everything that our competitors hard get. The simple interface, women-led, detailed profiles, highlighting mutual connections, but we also facilitate genuine in-person relationships. We provide you the entire runway and the rest is up to you. Now down to business, the revenue streams, how do we make this money? Well, we really have four main revenue streams. The first is our premium pricing model. Because we intend to create a safe, committed community, you can sign up to our app for $14.99 a month. To go pro, this will be at $13.99 a month. And this helps you boost your profile, get access to additional venues and more discounts and set forth. This other option is in-app purchases. Maybe you don't want to pay 40 bucks a month. I get it. But you can send likes, you can boost your profiles for additional surcharges. Then we have our venue partnerships where we will host promotional events to build an exclusive community focused on the Mila users, as well as having a wide variety of brand deals to help provide them with special discounts. Marketing strategy. So, of course, user acquisition is the fundamental foundation of anything that you have in the dating app industry because you want to get those users. You want people to be on your app. And so, with a wide variety of strategy, including targeting campaigns, as well as collaborating with influencers, we really want to make sure that we rely heavily on word of mouth marketing. But what makes it so interesting is that since I'm the founder, I have a lot of connections. And that's what makes me so unique and which is what makes this idea so compelling. <coughs> on my screen are four different individuals in my immediate connection. Three best friends and one is my brother. Now between these four people, I already have access to 3.1 million people. And I have hundreds more connections like this who are willing to help me at a very, very low cost. When we look at retention strategy, we're really focusing on this community building aspect to keep our different <coughs> users happy. Focusing on providing them with exclusive events, discounts and meetups, really hone in on this Mila community to get people to want to stay. For example, Soho House. Soho House gives you access to 43 houses worldwide and nine co-working spaces but it costs you $5,000 a year to be part of it. Or you could join Mila for $14.99 and get access to any event that we host at Soho House. 
Same with Tower Group. It's pretty hard to get a reservation these days with the increasing popularity in over 80 of its branded locations. Or you could join Mila for $14.99 and get access to any events and any dinners that we host there. Now the financials. Is this profitable? Absolutely. And here the reason our success is so profitable is because we really rely on leveraging virality from both a viral growth and user base perspective and also from a cash flow perspective. When we look at the viral user base growth, we see that we're projected to hit around 7,000 by the first year, increasing to 20,000 by the second year. And because of the access of 3.1 million people that I have at my fingertips, we'll also be able to project it to hit to 60K by the end of year three. More so than that, when we look at our cash flow, we aim to be cash flow positive as early as 15 months in. And this is again due to virality of the nature of the business projecting to hit up to 15 million by the end of year three. And so, where Mila is seeking $5 million in investment, seeking to accelerate our product development, as well as spearhead our marketing efforts to the next phase to get more users on it. More so than that, we're currently bootstrapped with 2,000K, 100 from me, and 100 from 1,000 connections, each of which are put in $100 each, because they believe in Mila, they believe in facilitating, integrating dating opportunities into your daily lives, and they believe that true love is priceless. So why not start your journey with Mila? Thank you. Hosting an event there starts at like five thousand dollars, and your people right. are paying fifteen dollars a month. How do you make, you know, scaling all these very expensive locations on a per event basis when people are paying a very small fraction? Small That's a very good question. A lot of it is uh, connections based, mm -hmm. um, and different conversations that I've had. I previously held events at said locations, and so I have people who are willing to do this from a standpoint in. You get foot traffic and the foot traffic gives you your own recurring revenue. I'm bringing foot traffic and therefore people are signing up to my app. So it's a win-win situation that really happens here because they're both getting the bar tab that is continuing to run on the expense of Mila, but the Mila users also benefit out of the, oh, I went to a Soho house event last night through my dating app. Mm -hmm. Yes, Martine. Thank you so much for the nice presentation and idea. Thank you. Uh, I That's a really interesting idea. I had not thought about that before. In terms of using data, the one thing that would be, I guess, phase two implementation is because it's a venue-based app, was to use the data to provide it to the actual venues versus like Soho houses being a brand deal to tell them, you know, this is this age group or this sort of demographic is interested in said locations. You should have more events that are, that are concentrated there as well as doing it for the actual bars and different venues, also doing it for the actual users. Oh, you know what, you tend to really talk and interact a lot with people at bar X, like why don't you check out bar Y tomorrow? So that's kind of how I'm thinking about integrating data, but much later, but you bring up a good point. Thank you. Yes, Grace. Um, so, me, I actually thought a lot about the name, and I, oh, I guess we'll leave it to this. Um, I actually thought a lot about the name, and Mila is actually a Hindi word that means found. You could pronounce it Mila, but I say Mila because it sounds like Mila Kunis, so it's easy to say. Um, and so I thought about it for some time, and Mila just means to found, so you find the love of your life instantly from point A to point B. Yeah, Boris. Um, you touched on kind of this connect by through love, but also about raising the connections. Mm -hmm. Can you envision this product for this person as a long-term peer creator, maybe a more casual creator? And can you use this app even if you're not familiar? 
Um, so I, so two parts. The first, I try to, I, my goal is to make it for intentional users, and that's what the fee is for, is to tell the not serious users, because I might be a non-serious user, but after I've spent, like, spent money for uh, six months, and I'm just casually interacting with people, I probably will end up deleting the app. I know that's something I've done, and that's what market research has also shown when I've led different focus groups. Um, so the goal is to have intentional data. Your latter half, do I see it going out more broadly to be used by people who aren't single? For sure, I think that's definitely like a phase two. I think of it similar to Bumble because it's Bumble, then they came to Bumble BFF. I think that definitely has um, definitely has legs and will be interesting to explore further. Mm -hmm, Adi. Uh, for all amazing presentation, uh, <coughs> my question is how will you maintain your users to keep subscribing? So imagine they went to an event and mm -hmm. found it. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure that they will keep subscribing to the next one? So that's really interesting because the one issue with dating apps is that you're trying to get them off the dating app eventually if it works well. And so I think the big thing is just to keep the community that's built. But the goal is that there are so many users that it works so effectively that you're consistently meeting new people and you're staying in the dating pool. But obviously if you find someone from a successful meetup, you're going to get off of it. So that's not our focus. Our, our, our real focus is keeping the people who are dissatisfied on Mila, so they keep giving it a good shot and a good run at it. And that's where we have our retention strategy, where we have some sort of, you know, you're trying to cancel your subscription. Oh, don't cancel, like six months, uh, you know, subsidized rate at $10 a month. But we don't want to retain the people who find their connections. That's not the ethos of the, of the business. Yes, yeah, Art. So you said 42% of people lie on their profiles. Yes. And you were going to provide, verify real people. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is location based. Yes. So I want to talk, I want you to, I'd like, love to hear about your plans for validating and verifying identity. Mm -hmm. And the second is ensuring safety on location based yes. um, uh, introductions. Okay, so I'm going to answer this latter half of the safety component. So since you get charged to use Mila, you're now given your credit card information. So that's some sort of background information and background check that happens behind the scenes to make sure that you are a verified user because of bank account, you're getting charged. Um, so that's the safety component. And then when it comes to the component of trying to make sure that, you know, 42% are lying, how do we verify that? That's twofold. When you there's like the verified check mark that you can get. You create your profile, you take a selfie of yourself, someone in the back will check that the selfie matches the photos that you have. If you match, you get a verified check mark. If you're not, you never have the check mark. And then the other part of it is people are less likely to lie. If I'm looking at you here and I see you standing at the bar over there, I'm going to know that you're lying and I'm not going to approach you. And that's kind of the ethos of it where because the point of matching or you know seeing the profile to when you actually see someone is much shorter, otherwise you can be on a dating app for a long time, there's less inclination to lie because you can check it quickly and also your algorithms are not running behind the scenes to, to be faulty and then to match you with someone. And that's the real reason that you were lying in the first place. Does that kind of answer your question? Thank you. Okay, well, thank you.